Welcome to Backstage Pass, the Rockstar Pro Wrestling's official podcast. It's the ultimate opportunity to look behind the scenes at Rockstar Pro and hear from the wrestlers themselves. Now here are your hosts, Chris Poland and Mark Turner. Greetings and welcome to another edition of Backstage Paths, Rockstar Pro Wrestling's official podcast. I am one of your hosts, Chris Poland, joined as always by my co-host, Mark Turner. Mark, how's it going? Hey, hi everybody. It's going great, man. Rockstar Pro, that's what it's all about. Rockstar Pro's been on fire. Could you say it's been coming fire lately? Yeah, I'll put in the sound effect, too. Oh, man, please do. But (laughs) November coming fire, how awesome is that, Chris? Oh, wow. A history-making pay-per-view. It's not very often we get to say that. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we say it's historic, but this time we literally mean it. It's true. I mean, everybody's been talking about the Iron Man match between the two Daves, Dave Chris and David Starr, that went 104 minutes. Two guys can claim Mr. 104. And they both do. And they both do. I mean, 104 minutes in a wrestling match. That's insane. An hour and 44 minutes. Is my math right? You're right. Uh, that's insanity. I mean, it's the longest recorded singles match in pro wrestling history. That's I mean, right. a lot of people were talking about the Chris Hero CM Punk match mm-hmm. from 2003 that went 93 minutes. I remember that tape was being traded all over the world. Oh, yeah. Illegally, but whatever. <laughs> whatever, dude. That's the way it worked. That's the way it worked back then, you know. Tapes. VHS tapes. Right. But uh, now the world's talking about a 104-minute match. Dave Christ and David Starr. It stole the show. It was amazing. An hour, 44 minutes. I don't think I can do anything for an hour, 44 no. minutes, let alone wrestle at that level. It's mind-blowing. The conditioning those two are in is just insane. I don't know how else to put it. I mean, the shape they're in, the wrestling shape they're in, is incredible. Yeah, so that obviously is the big news coming out of November Coming Fire, but that wasn't the only match on the card, despite its epic length. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, the baddest killers alive, Aaron Williams and Jake Chris, they retained the Rockstar Pro Tag Team Championships and it was a crazy match. It was it, a mosh pit scramble match. I haven't seen anything like that before. We have people falling from ceilings. We have, uh, it was a great matchup. And, you know, if Jake and Aaron retain against, I can't even remember, what was it, eight other tag teams? I think it was, yeah, eight or nine other teams. If they win against that many tag teams, who's going to beat these guys? I don't know. I, I really don't. They seem unstoppable at this point. Uh, but, I mean, if you're listening right now and you haven't seen November Coming Fire, like, what, what, are, you what are you doing? What, what, are you, what are you doing? You call yourself a wrestling fan? Yeah, go to rockstarprowrestling.com and order November Coming Fire, courtesy of DIYWrestling.com. It's monumental. It's an event you'll never forget. I know nobody that was at the arena will ever forget that. Yeah, great stuff. We have the 104-minute match. We have the tag team match. And the American Lucha Corps Championship changed hands twice. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, it was just... What was it, nine days prior that Ron Mathis lost the Rockstar Pro Championship to Aaron Williams after right. Aaron Williams cashed in his Cicero Cup opportunity. Uh, and it was just nine days that Mathis went without a belt because he was basically handed the belt on a silver platter by the man simply known as Michael. Well, what, after, what about Mikel? Oh, yeah, the man simply or not so simply known as Mikel handed it to him on a silver platter and gave him a title shot after Pompano Joe just won a hard-fought match. Just got beat up by a steel chair by the very same Mikel we just mentioned. Right. And, and now Mathis is the American Lucha Corps champion. And if you ask him, that title means more than any other title here. And if you ask him, he'll hold on to it forever? Uh, I was hoping you wouldn't say that. Sorry. Well, we'll find out this Friday, December 4th. Hey, that's a transition. Well done. Yeah, thanks. You know, those hosting classes are paying off. Oh, Okay. We'll find out on December 4th at A Killer Christmas if Ron Mathis is able to retain his American Lucha Corps Championship. That's right. There's an open challenge for the American Lucha Corps Championship. Any former Lucha Corps champion can challenge for the American Lucha Corps Championship. And it's not just one person. It could be multiple men. We could have a bunch of former champions in the ring challenging for it at the same time. I mean, there's been a lot of former American Lucha Mm -hmm. Corps champions. I mean, that title's changed hands a lot. It's been around. It's... Defended almost every week, so right. it goes around, and there's a lot of possibilities when it comes to that matchup. Ron Mathis might be in trouble, if you ask me. Well, he may be, but I would never count out the white trash messiah. He seems 
to find a way somehow. Yeah, he does have ownership in his back pocket as well, at least part of it. That's true. So that's not all that we're going to see at A Killer Christmas. You'll also see Samantha Heights take on Gregory Iron. Man, could this match get any more personal? It is as personal as it gets. Especially the way Gregory Iron tricked everybody, and especially Sam, into thinking that he turned a new leaf here in Rockstar Pro. Right. It, was, it was all a ruse just so he could get what he wanted, a victory, and to, I don't know, violate Sam in the middle of the ring. I mean, yeah. it was dastardly. Well, you know, the guy calls himself an inspiration. Oh, uh, the only thing he really inspires me to do is throw up in my mouth a little bit. Just disgusting the way he treats Samantha Heights. Yeah. But hopefully she'll get her revenge at a killer Christmas. I sure hope so. I know everybody wants to see that. The Rockstar Nation, I want to see it. And speaking of grudge matches, we'll also see Alex Cologne take on J.T. Davidson in a Dayton street fight. Yeah, did we mention personal matches? This Ooh. one's personal as well. I mean, definitely. Uh, J.T. Davidson and Alex Cologne, these two, they were together for a long time. I mean, J.T. Davidson helped guide Alex Cologne to many American Lucha Corps Championship reigns, to the Rockstar Pro Championship even. Right. And now these two, man, they are far apart, and Alex Cologne is seeking revenge and JT Davidson, this guy's only been in a couple of matches in right. his career, and now he's facing off with the best of the best, the maniac with the red towel in a Dayton street fight? I don't know. If you ask me, he's bitten off more than he can chew here. He may be in trouble, but we have to keep in mind, he is also the iron manager. He uh, lasted through that 104-minute match just as Dave Christ and David started. Uh, can we say we're iron commentators? What, what can we say? Um, yeah, maybe iron... Mouthpieces? Yeah. I don't I don't know. Something like that. But JT Davidson, of course, he's going to take credit for anything he can, right? Yeah. But JT Davidson, the man's confident. I'll say that. Uh, he, he issued the challenge to Alex Cologne. That he did. Um, this guy, he thinks he can win. Maybe he has something up his sleeve. I don't know. The man does have connections. Yeah, well, we'll certainly find out December 4th. We'll also see Nate Wings versus Jeremiah. Man, we've got a lot of personal... Uh, matches on a Killer Christmas. Yeah, what is it? Grudge match, grudge match, grudge match. Yeah. There's a lot of grudge matches <laughs> here. true. I mean, Nate Wings and Jeremiah, everybody knows their story listening to this, I, I assume. I mean, they're a tag team for a long time here in Rockstar Pro. Before Rockstar Pro Tag Team Championships existed, mm -hmm. I think many would say that they're the most successful tag team here in Rockstar Pro prior to that. Yeah, and, I think uh, so. You know, uh, Nate Wings turned on Jeremiah. Uh, when they had a chance to win the titles, I still don't know why he did that, really. I guess he thinks Jeremiah was holding him back, but I, I don't really see it. But Jeremiah seeks revenge at a killer Christmas. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Bobby Olsen has really gotten into Nate's head. I'm not sure. Yeah, he maybe well could have. Maybe he's the one who told him to grow out that facial hair, too. Do you yeah, think that's working that for him? What's that about? Maybe he doesn't want to look like a 16-year-old anymore? I don't I know. I don't know. It's kind of a molester stash it, there it is. at he, the moment. He went from being a 16-year-old to, to being a molester. He just jumped. It's quite an evolution. Quite an evolution, yes. We'll also see more tag team action as we see the two-man militia. That's Matt Taylor and Desmond Xavier take on Eric Ryan and Shane Strickland. I mean, on paper, that looks like a great matchup right there. I mean, oh, yeah. Eric Ryan and Shane Strickland, I don't know if these two have ever teamed up before, but they have very similar styles in the ring, very successful styles. They're great wrestlers. They, they've been champions Sometimes I think they are champions. At least one of them still a champion right now. Yeah. And they're teaming up at a killer Christmas, and they're taking on maybe the hottest, newest team in Rockstar Pro in the Two Man Militia. Yeah, that that uh, wonderful combination of a veteran yeah. and a young up and comer. Right. Right. They have so much to learn from each other. I think this is going to be a hell of a match. Yeah, very well could steal the show even. Very well might. But sp speaking of matches that could steal the show, yeah? the Dream On Tour oh, continues. Boy. I'm rubbing my hands on an audio podcast. In his penultimate match, Jake Crist will take on Sammy Callahan. The Death Machine returns to Rockstar. The Callahan Death Machine is back home. This is where he belongs in Dayton, Ohio at Rockstar Pro. Sammy Callahan returns. And he's going one-on-one -on -one with Jake Crist. I mean, you, the timing of this couldn't have been any better. You're right. Jake Crist on his retirement tour. This will be his second last match of his career. And it just so happens Sammy Callahan returns at the exact same time. Well, what beautiful timing right there. You and know, I mean, this matchup was basically destined to happen. It's been the buzz of the wrestling world for the past about week. Sammy Callahan, you know, asked out of his contract. Yeah. He's moving on. Where's he going to go? 
The first place he comes is Dayton, Ohio, Rockstar Pro to take on his former teammate, Jake Chris. I mean, and what an honor that is. I mean, we're not going to be seeing a, a hacker here. We're not going to be seeing a guy on his computer. Right. But we're going to be seeing the Callahan Death Machine. Yes. This guy that set the world on fire is returning, and he's coming here to Rockstar Pro to do the exact same thing again, set the world on fire with his brother-in-arms, Jake Christ. And there's still a main event to address here, Mark. That's not even the main event. It's insane. The main event, a triple threat match for the Rockstar Pro Championship, where we will see Aaron Williams defend Rockstar Gold against both Dave Christ and David Starr. After what Dave Christ and David Starr went through in November Coming Fire, I don't think anybody questioned that they were both deserving of a title shot. After what they did putting their bodies on the line to entertain the Rockstar Nation and to put on a show for everybody, they both earned this title shot. And now Aaron Williams has to defend the title against both of these men that we know can go 104 minutes. Oh, yeah. And Aaron Williams, though, this man, even though he's the champion heading into the match... He has something to prove here. I mean, the wrestling world, we're not just talking about Rockstar Pro. We're talking about the wrestling world is talking about David Starr and Dave Chris. Right. They turned the wrestling world upside down. They've made a historic match, and the world's been talking about them. Aaron Williams is like, hey, look at me, guys. Yeah. I'm the Rockstar Pro champion. Don't forget about me. And half the tag team champions. And half the tag team champions. He's setting the record books here at Rockstar Pro, but he still has something to prove in this match despite that. Oh, yeah, to be able to take on both Chris and Star in a single match and come out victorious, I mean, that would be, I think, the the pinnacle of Aaron Williams' already great achievements. Yeah, we've seen this guy overcome the odds time and time again. This guy came back from major surgery well before anybody thought he would, and he's somehow been better than ever despite that. And now he gets to a chance, an opportunity to overcome the odds once again. There's no champion's advantage in a triple threat match. It's a 33% chance anybody in that matchup has an equal chance to win. I thought you might go into some Scott Steiner math here. 33.3333. You can just say repeating. Oh, oh, I can? Yeah. Is there a line somewhere in that? (laughs) Uh, I don't know. But, I mean, Aaron Williams has a point to prove, and he could overcome the odds once again in this matchup. And we will find out... At a killer Christmas, that's December 4th. Oh, I can't wait. Here at Rockstar Pro Arena, 1106 East 3rd Street in lovely Dayton, Ohio, where uh, we may be in for a snowy, wintry day. We very well might be. It could be a killer Christmas for sure. It could be a killer Christmas as it well. It could be a killer white Christmas. Oh, I like that. Yeah, you know. Can we play that song? Uh, uh, there's I don't, no killer in that I song, I don't know right? if we can get the rights to that. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Let's go ahead and send it to our Spotlight segment, Uh, where we have one heck of an interview for you. It's time for the Rockstar Wrestler Spotlight! Okay, welcome to the Spotlight segment of this episode of Backstage Pass. And today we're going to shine the spotlight on one of the young up-and-comers, one of the new sensations here in Rockstar Pro Wrestling, Desmond Xavier. Desmond, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. Absolutely, thank you for being here. So... Let's start off at the very beginning. You know, everyone's in this business because they love it, or at least hopefully, right? Maybe there are a few who aren't, but we try to weed them out pretty quickly. If you don't love this, get out, period. So how did you develop a love for wrestling? Oh, uh, I believe that it was 1997, Halloween Havoc, Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero. Nice. That match right there is what planted the seed. Well, that actually, I'll say that sprouted the seed because it was planted as a, at a young age. My yeah. parents and my grandparents were, are big wrestling fans. Oh, nice. So I've been watching it for years. Yeah, yeah. Um, growing up, watching old WWF and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, but I was more gravitated towards WCW because of the Cruiserweight division. Right. Of course. As you can yeah, yeah. expect. But, uh, but yeah. That was the uh, the match that kind of put it in there that I would. Is that when uh, Ray's wearing the purple yeah. Spider-Man suit? Yeah. Hell yeah, that's an incredible match, mm-hmm. man! Halloween Havoc to go from the Dungeon of Doom in '95 to that in '97, quite some progress. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> so I should mention that uh, you are flanked here with us uh, today by some of your friends from Ohio is for Killers. We yes, have. yes, OI. 4K. 
That's Hello. right. We have Dave on your right, Zachary on your left. Uh, just so our listening audience knows, in case you hear some other uh, talk, you know, that's not just from off mic. These guys are all here with Desmond showing their support. So, you developed this love in uh, 97. How old were you at that time? <laughs> 97. Uh, I was nine. Oh, wow. Nine. You truly are a young one. So, uh, <laughs> uh, just nine years old watching that, and it just totally captured your imagination. Um, and I, I guess I was a little bit more mature for my age, because it wasn't just because of the moves that they were doing. It mm-hmm. was the way that the crowd was just captivated by every single thing. Yeah. The way that Eddie had his, his, just, his menacing demeanor as he was mm-hmm. walking around the ring, just calculating every single movement, and Ray... How he just—he he had the crowd in the palm of his hand. Yeah. Like, if he would have shed a tear, every single person in that crowd would have <laughs> shed a tear. And those those WCW crowds could be rough. Like they were really hit or miss. Yeah. Like yeah. so, I think to win them over really, you know, shows something. Yeah. Um. So flash forward a little bit. Okay. You're a military man, right? From Dayton, right? Or at least uh, uh, making your residence in Dayton now, right? Yes. Um, I was born in Dayton. Uh, okay. Right over at a Grandview Hospital. Okay. Um, and I lived here for about half of my life. And mm-hmm. then, uh, I moved up to Springfield for the remainder of okay. my life. And then from there, I joined the military. I joined the Air Force. Uh, I was in the Air Force for six years. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first two years, I spent in Italy. And my last four, I resided out in Maryland. Okay. So that that's the thing I feel like you can't grow up in this region, right? In the Miami Valley, a little bit beyond without having that Air Force kind of influence in your oh, life in definitely. some way, shape, or form. Well, I'm also a military brat. My, okay. Uh, my dad was also in the Air Force. And I come from a long lineage of military personnel, whether it be Marine Corps, Army, Navy, Coast Guard. Uh, take that back. No Coast Guard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, pretty much almost every branch of the military... Uh, outside of the Coast Guard. Yeah. Do you see, like, a, a connection between kind of the military mindset and the, the professional wrestling mindset? Maybe, I don't know, in discipline or something along those lines? I do. Uh, because although people feel that the military is 100% strict, you need to do it this way, this way, this way, mm-hmm. um, there is a really decent amount of leeway, and you do have to have a strong sense of self-discipline yourself. Right. And when it comes to wrestling, it's the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Um, You're out there, in a sense, by yourself, but you're also working with somebody else. Right. And, um, but it comes to a point where you have to maintain the discipline of eating right, um, Right. taking care of your body, and also taking care of that person that you're inside of the ring with. So, yeah, that discipline is a major portion of it, but the main thing that I have to say is the camaraderie that you have. Right. Uh, When you build up a relationship and a friendship with people, it grows to a point that you're like brothers, sisters, Mm -hmm. uh, father figures, whatever it may be, or mother figures. Sure, sure. I don't know who you see as a mentor. Yeah, there's that real uh, familial feeling. Yeah, Um, yeah, I I can see that for sure. And I feel like both, to a degree, require a certain level of uh, adaptability, right, Of, of flexibility, where in that moment, you have to make a decision. Yes. Right? Um, and, you know, in wrestling, the person you're working with, you know, their safety de- is determined by that decision. It definitely is. So, yeah, uh, um, I feel like maybe responsibility is another key word yes, there. Yes, definitely. So, it was while you were in the Air Force, uh, while you were in Italy, I believe, you, you, you told me uh, a week or two ago that you decided that you were going to make this commitment in your life. You were going to train to be a professional wrestler. Yeah, um, the thought of actually pursuing this uh, started to get brainstormed while I was in Italy. Uh, a friend of mine, Skylar, we were having some fun inside of a, a giant bouncy castle. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we were doing some moves that we had saw on uh, uh, one of the pay-per-views that we were watching. I forget which one it was. Yeah. And uh, I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do this when I get back to the States. I knew that I was moving back and everything. Yeah. And uh, he was like, well, wish you the best. Mm-hmm. Came back. I spent about a year out, out in Maryland. Then I got deployed. And uh, while I was over in Kuwait, he sent me a message saying, hey, this school opened up in the area. When mm-hmm. you get back, you want to go check it out? Like, yeah, sure. Yeah. So uh, myself, him, uh, my best friend Chris, we went out there. We uh, talked with everybody. We went out to Gilbert's Pro Wrestling Academy, mm-hmm. uh, which is no longer around, unfortunately, for some people in that area. But there is a great school, uh, Maryland Wrestling Academy. Oh, cool. Look it up. Yeah. Bing! <laughs> um, but... Uh, 
Gilbert's was around, so we went in there, we talked to them, we uh, ran the ropes, took some bumps, and I, I just fell in love. Awesome. Uh, I was at, out of the group of people, myself and Skylar were the only ones that, uh, that went with it for a little bit, but I was the only one that graduated out of okay. those three. So, but it was a. Uh, it, it was awesome, and I still have that passion and that love. Actually, I think it's more than what it was from back. Yeah, then. that's great. And I, I, you know, I I hear this all the time. I want to know if there's any truth to it. Do you know that first bump you take if this is the business for you or not? Uh, I would say no. No, no. Okay. Um, because there's some people that I'll I'll, I'll, I'll use some of my training as an example. Um, there was a, there were a couple of students inside of the training that were great athletes. Uh, they could take bumps, they could run the ropes, they could do everything that they needed to, but they just didn't have the heart. Um, they didn't have what it took to go on the road, uh, to be mm-hmm. there early so that they can uh, pay their dues or right. the initial paying the dues while you're in practice. Um, they just didn't have uh, the heart and the mentality right. in order to be successful at the smaller level. So... I couldn't even imagine what it would have been like if they would have actually progressed and got to a point where sure they really needed to be tested. Yeah, you have to have the passion, right? Yeah, if you, if you don't have that worth work ethic either, um, get out. Yeah, period. <laughs> Sorry, that was probably really loud. No, no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> we got a new mic. All is good. All right. Uh, so, so you've developed this this high flying, spectacular style. You call yourself the general of lightning warfare, right? Yes. Uh, obviously, that we're gonna say that's. Not about German military strategy. You know, what What does that mean to you? <laughs> um, it actually does kind of stem from... Blitzkrieg? Yeah, it does stem from Blitz, uh, Blitzkrieg. Yeah. Now, but it stems from Blitzkrieg in a different way. Um, okay. In WCW, there was a high flyer by the name of Blitzkrieg. Mm-hmm. Um, he, uh, he ended up going away for... He, he was amazing. Amazing. He used to hit a, uh, a half-turn springboard... Uh, moonsault from the uh, from the inside to the outside, and it was just glorious. Nice. Uh, he used to do Arabians. He used to hit a Phoenix Splash. He used to hit four uh, fifties uh, like it was nothing. Yeah. Standing full twist moonsaults, which <laughs> happens to be a move that I actually use myself. Right. Um, but then the mantle was actually taken up by Jack Evans for a period of time. Oh, really? And um, he's phenomenal. And yes, uh, I've, I've been a fan of Jack Evans for a long time. And um, but the word Blitzkrieg is. It's just awesome, man. It's lightning warfare. That can be taken in so many different aspects. Right. Lightning because it's a spontaneous. Mm-hmm. They say it never strikes twice, but it also strikes in a very sporadic way. Mm-hmm. Um, it can be fast, and then depending on where you're at, you see it in a slower motion. Sure. Um, and it's very mm-hmm. poetic. Yeah. Um, now, warfare, you're in a battlefield when you're inside of the ring. Right. You're going to war with somebody. So, lightning, warfare... It only makes sense. And then, when you're in the military, there's really only one position that means anything, and that's the general. Um, now, I'm not going to be a four-star general. I'm going to be a wartime general, which is a five-star, which is very rare for you to have, but it's okay. only in a very specific time. So I like it. That shows confidence. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing I think you have to have in this industry is okay? confidence. You have to be able to. You have to be able to make believe in what you do and sell yourself. Right. Which, um, I'm not cheap. <laughs> and it's really like given given your biggest influence there, right? It's it's no real surprise that that's kind of the 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 style that you developed, you know. Given that that ninety seven match oh, between yes. Eddie and Ray yes. really captured your attention, so um, let's talk a little bit about your connection to or with, let's say, Ohio is for Killers, right? You're currently flanked by these guys. Um, we know that on the East Coast, uh, you've been working together. You know, what does it mean to be kind of uh, part of this family for you? Uh, it's exactly that, a family. Um, and in order for you to get into this family, uh, it all stems from one word, and that's respect. Mm-hmm. Um, if you do not earn the respect of the people uh, a in this business, and then uh, the people that you're going to be working with, then you're not going to be able to make it anywhere. Right. Um, and as when they accepted me as family, uh, which uh, I feel happened at a rather quick pace, uh, which I'm rather honored for. Yeah. But uh, once they accepted me, I knew that this was something special. Uh, I've known of 
Ohio was for Pillars for a rather long time. I actually met Dave and Jake um, at a CZW show roughly three and a half years ago. I don't think that they remember it, um, <laughs> but uh, it was uh, an eye pay per view, and uh, they came up with uh, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Sammy Callahan. Yeah, and uh, we uh, I was standing around with a couple of friends of mine and some uh, uh, some people from out in Maryland, and uh, we uh, I, I was introduced to uh, Ohio's for Killers at that moment, I see. Uh, which I actually remember that day rather vividly. Yeah, this it's just something special. Not only do we have a unique bond inside of the ring, but outside of the ring as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're family. Period. Point blank. Excellent. And I think you can kind of see that in um, your match with Zach last week, right? Uh, um, you two, you know, we talked a little bit before Amped last week, and and you really express to me that you feel like you bring out the best in one another and I think that the whole Rockstar Nation really got to see that uh, in that match do you mind if I interject something real quick oh by all please means. do so before before I even really knew <coughs> who this gentleman was um, I watched a lot of his stuff on YouTube okay I was unfamiliar with him as a person but I was familiar with him as a wrestler right and uh, I remember when he stepped foot in a spontaneous David Starr uh, seminar. It was just, you know, hey, let's let's do this. And they did it for people that were only coming into Ludus. Okay. And I remember seeing him and I remember seeing how he carried himself, how how he how he spoke, and just, you know, all together, just him, his aura, if mm-hmm. you will. Yeah. And uh, that night, uh, me and uh, me and Mr. Starr purposely like Put these two together mm-hmm. uh, to do to do a match, and just everything that they did was magic. Yeah, and you could just tell that they instantly like had something <laughs> with each other. Right, and then from that point, I was like, okay, I want to see if this kid's the truth. Mm-hmm. And then um, I, I was very fortunate enough uh, to to get to wrestle Desmond. Mm-hmm. And his second Ludus match, first one was against Dustin. Uh, the first one, it was supposed to be the kid, but the kid had an injury and he couldn't couldn't wrestle. And then the second time, the kid had yet another injury. Gotcha. Um, I believe he had he got staph infection on one of them, and then he um, he slightly tore something in his back, so he had Oof. to like take a little bit of time off. Yeah. But. I remember coming in, I said to myself, I'm going to see what this kid has. Yeah. I'm going to see if this kid can hang. Mm-hmm. And if this kid can hang, he's family. And the, the cool thing about this is, like, uh, we invited them over um, for a Halloween party we had. And mm-hmm. it was just, like, an instant bond. Yeah. It was like when, like, when, when I meet someone and you can just tell. You can just tell sure. that this person's going to be the dude that like is is going to be a part of your clique and, right um this dude was just the the way that he spoke and the way that we all talked and we come to find out we grew up in, in around the same area yeah which was really ridiculous uh we grew up the same i mean working hard and what's really cool about him and and i'll, I'll stop at this is he came up the old school way Mm, he came right. up with respect he came up with honoring himself and the mm-hmm. business and that's something that's very rare especially right. with someone you know as young as he is and and to just further that off we had a young boy that came up and wanted to be a part of our group mm-hmm. uh, came from uh, the same place down south as he did and uh, the minute that that kid had been here for a few weeks and he hadn't had a match yet he got pissed and was like, well, Desmond was on real quick, and I can't even get a shot yet. Mm. So he decided to quit because he was jealous of Desmond. Right. And what's crazy is fans knew this. So therefore, he had no honor. Right. He had no right to be in the ring. Yeah. And I just proved it. This kid sitting next to me is honor, is respect, and is the wrestling business. It, it, there's no I'm not joking I'm not kidding right these two right here will be one of the greatest tag teams 
in professional wrestling history if they continue to tag. And if they're not, they're going to be great singles competitors. Absolutely. But watching them work together in the ring, Mm -hmm. you can just tell that they would be a phenomenal tag team. Yeah. And that's kind of where we are now. Right. Yeah, I think, you know, attitude is so important, right? You know, it's funny because I see a, a reflection in what you said, Desmond, and what you're saying, Dave, in that, you know, you said you feel like you were accepted by um, OI4K very quickly. You also said that the Rockstar Nation accepted you very quickly. I think that's because everyone can pick up on that attitude, that work ethic, that respect, that love for the business, right? Do you mind if I just add one more thing? Please do. I'll tell you what he has. Yeah. And it's the same thing the kid has. It. Yeah. When you guys see him or see them in the ring, you can't help but to love them. Both of them are infectious. And when when they're... I don't even want to tell you about last <laughs> night at Applebee's. <laughs> <laughs> like, everybody at Applebee's was paying attention to what we were doing because we were the center of attention. Yeah. And it was like... It was though. It's, it was these two, myself, Clayton Jackson, and Good Hammer. Good hand, good hand, huh? good hand. Yeah. That's what the kids call our good hand. That's that's new mom. That's new mom. It, it's, it, there's everything about them captivates people. Mm, yeah, they have that ability to just draw everyone's attention and hold it, and it's because we have great abs. Ladies like that, right? Hey. No abs. <laughs> I got flaps for days, <laughs> but I got thighs. Oh, no, no, no. And a dick. Yeah. <laughs> there, 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 there. That's, that's, what, that's, what, that's what everyone was waiting for. But that's that's the thing is like <laughs> these kids. That's like watch them together. Right. Like, I dare you to pay attention to them for the entire time they're here before the show starts and not laugh at them. Yeah. I dare you. I dare you. Well, Mark and I have to be careful on commentary because sometimes <laughs> we get. So wrapped up in the match that we stopped talking, and uh, you know, I think that was one of those nights. We have to be able to focus on our jobs rather than just enjoy the match, right? Absolutely. We're sorry about that. <laughs> no, 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 we're not. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> I, I'm it's not going to say have. any names, but I did get an email from somebody that said, "Hey, no offense to you guys, but the Zach wins Desmond Xavier match blew the 104 minutes out of the water for match of the month." Oh. I'm like. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know why you had to tell me about that. Right. Uh, thank you. I guess my 104 minutes didn't mean shit. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> but it's like, what the fuck? Why would you even say that? Yeah. See, if I ever go 104 minutes again. <laughs> right. you, you mind twisting the knife a little bit after you? <laughs> yeah, I know the kids are fucking well. Thanks. <laughs> so, let's. I was there popping too. <laughs> let's look to the immediate future. On Friday, you, with your uh, uh, partner for the time being, right, uh, Matt Taylor, the two-man militia, right, you're going to have a match with Eric Ryan and Shane Strickland, as I understand it. Yes. Um, what are you doing going into that to mentally, physically prepare yourself? I will com- be completely honest with you. I focus on one match at a time. Mm-hmm. The match that I have against Dave... Mm-hmm. And Jake Christ tonight with my brother tonight. Zachary Wentz is the match that is on my mind. Okay, um, we have been That's smart going through strategy. We've been studying tape. We've been talking to each other, and we've been well, trying to figure been it out. What have you guys been talking I, about? I, I, Please fill me in. You will find out <laughs> later. You will find out. You guys got some double sure. teams? I, I mean, ma- uh, like you should tell me the double teams. That way, so I can like you know. Uh, tell you if I think they're going to work or not. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, how about we do... Let's just do try, surprise. Let's just do trial by fire. We'll just do that. Back Mind fire. games. There we go. We'll just get it in there. But Don't worry, kids. Whatever you guys have, we have a counter for everything. I'm pretty sure you do. You're going to get your fucking head kicked. Dude. <laughs> oh! JK. Not really. <laughs> no, it's on tape, bro. I hope you enjoy your teeth while you have <laughs> I think you're the only one that hasn't taken I've, I've taken kicks to the face. Have you? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. All right, but, uh, but yeah. I is, that take, a, is that a pussy in his lips? I take, <laughs> I, take, um, I take every match seriously. Sure. Um, 
but I also take it one at a time. Okay. Uh, because if you're looking too far ahead, that you're gonna then you're gonna miss what's right in front of you. Right. And this match is right in front of me. Right. Um, this is a match of a lifetime. The last time that Dave and Jay Chris will tag together. Right. That's right. And I I, I can't express enough uh, the uh, how honored. Zach and I both are right um, for this privilege. Um, goals. It's it, it's it's a goal. Yeah. That we've that we've accomplished something scratched off our bucket list, uh, which continues to grow as we right. continue to grow in this business. Absolutely. But right now, this <coughs> is this is that peak. Right. Uh, this is where we're going to be living the high life until something better comes along, which, I mean, it's going to be kind of hard for something better than this to come around. But, uh, until then, yeah, we're going to be, we're going to be riding this high, this wave, this for a while. Awesome. Awesome. So, word on the street is that you're not going to be in Dayton for very much longer. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yes. As painful as it is to, uh, to say, I'm sorry, Zach. Um, this has been in the works for about two years. Uh, mm-hmm. In all honesty, uh, it, uh, it was meant for me to be here because my cousin wanted to move down with me, so we postponed plans. Mm-hmm. So I postponed my plans to move down south um, for him, which led to me having a rebirth here at Rockstar. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I honestly can't thank God enough for that. Um, so, <clears throat> but... Back to, uh, as you were saying, uh, yes, I will be moving down south. No. Uh, I will be residing in Orlando, Florida. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, we're going to take, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take every opportunity that is given to me, but I'm also going to kick in a couple of doors and make sure that some opportunities are taken. Hell yeah. Uh, because I refuse to have a situation happen like I did when I moved back from Maryland. I took pretty much a year off because I was waiting for something to come to me. Mm-hmm. Um, but now with everything that I've learned, how much I've grown, mm-hmm. I'm not going to let anything like that happen again. Right. So, moving down south, uh, I'll be residing in Orlando, but, but, this is a giant but, underlined, italicized, and bold, <laughs> um, I will be back. Okay. Uh, I will be back as much as possible. This is home. Gotcha. Uh, That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, nothing, nothing compares to the atmosphere, uh, the feel of being here at Rockstar. Mm -hmm. That's why everybody wants to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're all definitely going to be wishing you the best of luck down in Florida and eagerly awaiting your return (laughs) to Rockstar Pro. Thank you. Uh, Absolutely. Okay, so we've uh, talked about the business, right? We've talked about uh, your style and uh, uh, what you have planned. Let's just have a little fun, all right? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw at you some names of rock star pro wrestlers, mm-hmm. and I want you to give me the first word that comes to mind. Okay. Okay? I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm going to make it easy or hard to begin with, but we're going to start with people in the room. <laughs> okay. Dave Christ. Influential. Zachary Wentz. Rival. Ooh. How about Aaron Williams? Gosh, love. <laughs> I don't know why that that came up. I love I, I love him, man. Yeah, awesome. he, he's a he's very awesome lovable man. guy. He is also the baddest man alive. That's man. true. <laughs> uh, Nate Wings. Awesome. How about Bruce Gray? Back, because <laughs> he has a he has great back muscles. Uh, yeah, I, I, saw, I saw him at never Thanksgiving. Really looked all that I saw him at Thanksgiving. <laughs> Uh, this because this is gonna sound extremely weird, but yeah, he was beating up on somebody that was a part of our of our Survivor Series team. Yeah, um, I believe that it may have been Sex De Niro. Yeah, it may have been him. But yeah, he was giving him some solid strikes, and his back was just like I was like, Yo, Dave, Bruce has a nice back. And he was like, Yeah, no, and yeah. but that's that's as far. But yeah, back. All right. <laughs> See, that's that's the kind of insight you get on this show. Yeah, there you go. All right, what about John Murray? Lovable. Yeah. Yeah. How about Alex Cologne? I'll say scary. Yeah? Yeah, because when I first met him, he would never say anything to me. No? He would side-eyed me the entire time. <laughs> uh, we never talked. It wasn't until um, um, 
my match at Cerebral for CZW uh, is after he actually talked to me. He would wow. never talk to me. Huh. Yeah. I always, I always thought that he just wanted to kick me in the face. <laughs> well, hopefully now you know better, right? I, I mean, he may still want to kick right. me in the face, but at least he'll talk well, to me before <laughs> and after. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> hopefully. All right. How about JT Davidson? Breathtaking. Uh, the 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 things that that man can do on the mic. Even when I was going against uh, OI4K, mm-hmm. his words inspired me. I was not on the 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 good side of the things that he was saying, um, but it brought it, it invoked such an emotion out of me yeah. that made me want to be better. And then now that we are actually able to sit around and talk on a different level and in a different way, uh, he's 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 a great man. He's awesome. a, a captivating speaker, to be sure. I didn't get really a chance to explain my wording for you. Can you I want go, to? Can I go back? Yeah, let's, yeah, do let's it. go back. Uh, for Dave, influential. Yeah. And that's in more ways than one. Um, not just inside of the ring, but outside of the ring as well. Um, because I see how he interacts with people in his unique Dave way. Mm-hmm. Um whether it be joking or whether it be serious, um, his heart is behind it. Yeah. Um, same thing with inside of the ring, whether it's joking or whether it's serious, his heart is behind it. Right. Um, and he's influenced me in more ways than I can really say. Um, not, like I said, not just with inside of the ring, but outside of the ring. Yeah. Um, he is my mentor. He's somebody, he's somebody that I am going to be coming back to with... <laughs> Sorry, but every single problem that I have, <laughs> uh, every single decision that I'm kind of going to be making, uh, he's, uh, although he was trying his best to stop me from moving uh, down to Florida, he also pulled me aside and he said, look, although I want you to stay, mm-hmm. you have to go. Right. You have to see what is out there for you. Yeah. And I, if I crash and burn, I know that I still have my family here. Absolutely. Um, now, with Mr... Zachary Wentz over here. Uh, <laughs> two scoops of wood. Two scoops of um, <laughs> I say rival, um, but back behind that is brother. Um, mm-hmm. He's my rival because we push each other. And the way that we push each other is what's going to help get us to where we want to be mm-hmm. in this business. Um, I made a post about it a little while ago that um, stranger became a friend. Well, correction, a stranger became a rival, rival became a friend, friend became a brother. Yeah. And that's exactly the progression that we had because I had not known Zach until that seminar with David Starr. Oh, wow. We got in there, we did that practice match. We didn't know either one of each other's moves. Uh Uh-huh. We went in there and we had a great match. We sat and we talked and... It, it, everything just clicked. Mm-hmm. He's helped push me to a point that um, I have been able to do the things that I've been doing in the ring. Because I, in all honesty, I wouldn't. I never really had the confidence to do some of the moves that I have been doing. Um, but I knew that if I wouldn't do them, then Zach would be overshadowing me with some of the things <laughs> that he'd be doing. So, <clears throat> through caution to the wind, yeah, and. Um, um, my abilities, I guess, just just shine through. Excellent. But, uh, yeah. It was because no of this question. kid that uh, that all that happened. Cool. All right. So one more, one, one final more. one, one final one. Since you're going to be competing against him in the Dream on Tour, Jake Christ. I can't. It's more of one phrase. And okay. It's, and it's thank you. I mean, everybody's yeah. been saying it for so long. Um, thank you, Jay Christ, uh, for everything that you've done. But it, I, I have to say thank you in a different way. Um, thank you, Jake, for the opportunities that you have given me. Uh, and this goes along with Dave, too. They've put their, um, um, their reputation on the line for me. They've spoken with people saying, hey, you may not have seen this kid, but take my word for it. You will not be disappointed with what you see. Mm-hmm. Um, 
because for some, I, I don't want to say for some reason, but there, uh, there were people that did not know about me. <clears throat> and when I came in, um, Jake was like, I haven't really seen anything from you, but Dave said that this is going to work. So we'll, we'll give it a try. Yeah. And thank God. <laughs> it actually, uh, it did actually work. But, um, but yeah, the, the uh, it's, it, I can't just say a word. It, it's, it's thank you yeah. for everything that he's done. Absolutely. And thank you. You oh. gave me a great transition. Ooh. Thank you for being on the show. Oh, you're very uh, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Desmond Xavier, great to have you. Gentlemen, nice to have you here as well. Can we get like a sound by the lightning striking? Yeah, oh, totally. <laughs> Elvira's hot, by the way. <laughs> Elvira? Oh, yeah, still, man. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, my gosh. With her boobs, she broke a chain. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> And we're back, and we're excited for a killer Christmas. I can't wait for it, man. It's going to be insane. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I don't know what it is, but every single month, I, I, we've been saying this time and time again, yeah. it seems like Rockstar Pro isn't going to be able to top the last iPay-Per-View. You know? Yeah. I mean, 104-minute match. We can't top that, right? But then Sammy Callahan's returning. Yeah. Triple threat match. I can't wait for this matchup. But somehow... Rockstar Pro is going to raise the bar once again, and I can't wait for it. I tell you what, if you haven't been watching Rockstar for the past, let's say, six months... What are you doing? You've been missing out on some of the greatest, <laughs> if not the greatest, right. I'll go there, professional wrestling in the world today. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, the, the evolution of this company is just... It's phenomenal. It, it's phenomenal. I mean, it's always been quality wrestling. Mm -hmm. Like, it's always been very good product that Rockstar Pro Wrestling has put on the table, but as of late, it's gone into a whole different stratosphere here. I mean, we're talking oh, yeah. about one of the best companies around now. I mean, I would put up November Coming Fire, I'd put up Horrorcore with any pay-per-view oh, yeah. anybody's putting on anywhere. Easily. Yeah. Easily. And hopefully we'll top that yet again at a killer Christmas. Hey, I bet we will. This Friday, December 4th. Let me just run through real quick. You'll see Samantha Heights versus... Gregory Iron. You'll see Nate Wings versus Jeremiah. Alex Colon versus JT Davidson. Jake Chris versus Sammy Callahan. Boom. The two man militia versus Eric Ryan and Shane Strickland. A triple threat match for the Rockstar Pro Championship with Aaron Williams, Dave Christ, and David Starr, and even more. Boom, boom. Craziness. And once you're done with that on the 4th, you can come back later in December for Ludus. Yeah, that's right. On Friday, December the 18th, it's the next Ludus, Ludus number 8. 8. That's V-I-I-I. -I -I. That, that's a lot of eyes. Yeah. Yeah. What, what happened to WrestleMania 8? Uh, that, that was the one in Indianapolis, right? That was. Yeah, that, um, it, Ric Flair and Macho Man, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be as good as Ric Flair and Macho Man, this Lutus 8 event right here. I think Ron, so. Ron Mathis defends the Lucha Corps Championship, if he still has it, that is. That's true. Against Sex De Niro, and Zachary Wentz will be taking on Clayton Pex Jackson as well, because, you know, that's what Lutus is all about, is the young guns, the young up-and-comers here in Rockstar Pro. That's right. Those are two of the best right there we have. In addition to amazing wrestling action, don't forget that Rockstar Pro has plenty of great concerts for you to see as well. Putting the Rockstar and Rockstar Pro, baby. Damn straight. December 5th at 8 p.m., you're going to see some great cover bands. Hollow, that's an Alice in Chains tribute band, and Sweet Leaf, a Black Sabbath tribute. You love that Sweet Leaf, Mark? Oh, yeah, sure. Why not? Bow, bow, ba, da, ba, da, ba. Uh, December 13th. At 5.30 p.m., it is Metal Craziness with Battlecross, Havoc, Necro Goblin Con, Black Fast, and War Curse. And then finally, on December 19th, at 6 p.m., you're going to see a Battle of the Bands featuring some of the greatest bands in Ohio. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. But before all of that, we hope to see you right here at 1106 East 3rd Street on Friday, December 4th. Doors open at 7, first bells at 7.30. It's a killer Christmas. Oh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. So don't forget to check out rockstarprowrestling.com where you can, through DIYWrestling.com, watch some pay-per-views of the past where you can check out the roster, listen to this podcast, Absolutely. get all your information about Rockstar Pro. And there's also links to all the social media on rockstarprowrestling.com. You can check out Twitter. You can check out the Facebook. You can check out the Periscope. You can check out whatever else we have. I don't even know anymore. You can maybe even follow the Tender Terrorist. Yeah, maybe you could. But what matters most is that we see you here on the 4th 
for a killer Christmas. It's uh, it's going to be a great holiday. You're not going to want to miss it. Hey, you know what? Is, what? The, is there really a link to the Tinder terrorist on Rockstar Pro? I don't know, man. Why? Are you, uh, you looking for something? No, no, no. no. Oh, okay. But I got a friend. Yeah? Uh, let's leave it at that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do this off mic. That's all for this episode. Be sure to come back for another edition of Backstage Pass, Rockstar Pro Wrestling's official podcast.